Vibrations are everywhere. Sometimes they can slow us down. But controlling vibrations and the waves they produce has enabled technology to move more smoothly, faster, and higher. Vibrations and waves are probably the most common phenomena we encounter every day. If it weren't for vibrations and waves, the world would be a silent, dark place. For sound is nothing more than vibrations of the air, light travels as a wave, radio and television signals are waves, and even heat is a vibration. The molecules at the heat source vibrate faster and transmit the vibration to the molecules next to them, and so on down the line. Vibrations produce waves. The waves carry the energy of the vibrations away, often causing vibrations in other places, like the rest of a structure. Machinery that vibrates excessively will make a lot of noise. If vibrations are not controlled, machines can literally shake themselves apart. So it's important to identify the vibrations and the waves they produce so they can be isolated. A vibration is a disturbance, usually something moving back and forth. When waves move, you are seeing energy in motion. Waves move energy from one place to another, but they do not carry the matter with them. This spring is still in the same position it was before. Only the wave or the pulse traveled from one end to the other. It's like a wave at a ball game. The fans are only moving up and down, but the wave action travels all the way around the stadium. If something is physically moved back and forth by a vibration and a wave passes through, that's a mechanical wave. Water waves, sound waves, and earthquakes are mechanical waves. There's one wave that doesn't need a medium at all, the electromagnetic wave. Radio, television, and our whole communications industry relies on the fact that electromagnetic waves travel best through a vacuum. These waves are rapid, periodic disturbances in an electric and magnetic field. Electromagnetic waves are far different from mechanical waves, but they still have the same characteristics and behave in a similar way as all waves. Another way of describing a wave is by the motion of the particles in the medium. When the particles move up and down or side to side at right angles to the direction of the wave, the wave is called a transverse wave. Water waves and electromagnetic waves are transverse. Waves that have particles vibrating in the same direction as the wave are called longitudinal or compression waves. The material is compressed then released and that vibration is in the same direction as the motion of the wave itself sound waves, and most vibrations through solids are compressional or longitudinal waves. Sometimes objects will twist back and forth because of some torque applied to them, and these become torsional waves. Very long, thin objects like bridges are subject to torsional waves. In each case, only the wave travels from one place to another. The wave is transmitting energy, not the material itself. The waves pass through the material, using it as a medium. Understanding vibrations and the waves that result is important because the waves will affect the medium through which they're passing. Cass Tang Swanger is an engineer concerned about vibrations that occur in a ship. This one has two gas turbine engines operating at 10,000 RPM. Isolating the engines from vibration is critical to smooth operation. One of the reasons that we put shock mounts on a ship, such as these down here, is to prevent the vibration from the hull of the ship from translating up into the foundation of our turbine. This protects the turbine from any critical vibration or natural frequency vibration that could occur. Um, we have a rubber mount right here and we change those every so often. They're dated and they have to be checked frequently. Another problem that can occur on a ship is the vibration from the propeller. We have a distance of the propeller from the hull of the ship and if the propeller is too close it creates pressure waves 
and that puts natural vibration, natural frequency into the ship, which can then translate up into the foundation of our turbine. Another way that we can prevent vibration is to make sure that the propeller of the ship is submerged in the water far enough so that in rough seas, we don't have the propeller popping up and out of the water and slapping the water, thereby creating definite impacts into the ship. It's important that we isolate the turbine from the ship because the turbine is made up of very delicate parts. If the turbine is torqued in any way, we'll have misalignment of parts and the turbine will probably break down. Because waves move energy, we need to identify certain characteristics. Surfers have a good understanding of waves. Can you figure out what characteristics of a wave a surfer would be interested in? One characteristic is how tall the wave is. In fact, surfers are often willing to travel great distances to find the big one. The height of a wave is its amplitude. Another characteristic of a wave is its length, the distance between two crests. The length of a wave is appropriately called its wavelength. If a surfer is good, he will want to catch as many waves in a day as possible. How many waves pass in a unit of time is the frequency. These characteristics of waves, amplitude, wavelength, and frequency are what must be measured whenever waves appear in technology. In radio, the shape of an electromagnetic wave is modulated or changed. You've probably heard of AM and FM. Robert Castigar explains the difference. Modulation is the process of putting information or an audio signal on an RF carrier. In amplitude modulation, the instantaneous value of the amplitude of the carrier is varied in accordance with the audio signal. The instantaneous frequency of the carrier is shifted in accordance with the amplitude of the audio signal, although the amplitude of the carrier remains constant. In summary, the difference between AM and FM in amplitude modulation the carrier amplitude is varied, and in frequency modulation, the carrier frequency is varied. Waves are an important diagnostic tool. Geologists use the speed of earthquake waves as they pass through the Earth to understand the structure of the Earth's interior. Studying how waves move through a medium tells you important information about the medium itself, as well as the amount of energy in the waves. A seismogram provides the geologist with the amplitude, frequency, and wavelength of the earthquake waves. If a piece of machinery is making an unusual noise, a trained ear can often recognize the problem just from the sound. Medical technicians use ultra-high frequency sound waves to see inside the body. Some organs reflect waves better than others. The reflected waves are translated into an image like this the beating of a horse's heart. The control of vibrations and the waves they produce is critical to the control of sound in the workplace. Too much vibration means too much noise. It also affects the life of the machinery itself. Knowing about vibrations and the waves they produce helps us control them or make them go away.